Good day, awesome folks, and hopefully, or Somerset Sizzles fans, and welcome to my TBU draft analysis video where I'm going to be going through the team that I picked, uh, the reasons why I think they're awesome, worthy to be on the team, and uh, yeah, some of the things that I may be thinking of doing with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, competitors, please, please don't watch this. <laughs> You'll learn all my mighty secrets. Uh, yeah, so basically, friends, um, I got sniped a lot during this draft. I was in the 12th spot in the draft if you haven't seen the stream and while the 12th spot in the draft was fantastic for being able to pick two consecutive Mon because it was a snaking draft, it went 1 to 12 and then 12 to 1 again so I got two picks in a row. Uh, but it did mean I had to wait uh, for 11 people to draft before me each time it was to get back down to me, you know, after my two picks. So a lot of things got sniped, I had to replace a lot of things on the fly so this is in no way shape or form the team that I had planned out originally. I did get my Mega though, and I did get one of my defensive mon- two of my defensive mon, and one of my offen- no, two of my offensive mon. So yeah, so I got five mon out of the 13 that I originally planned, but that's not very much when you were planning synergy and stuff and things. Uh, so yeah, let me run through the team in the order that they were picked. First of all, we have Landorus Incarnate. Now, I know a lot of you will be thinking, Hey, hold up a second, you cheeky bastard. What are you doing? This here mon is banned according to Smogon. Well, yes, yes, it is banned according to Smogon, but we don't necessarily follow Smogon's ban list anyway. We do have Mega Moile, for instance, uh, because a draft-based format does actually provide opportunities for mon that would be banned from OU to be used in a less unfair way because they can be prepared for because you'll know your opponent is probably going to bring them. Um, but uh, apart from that, it was actually only banned on the day of the stra uh, of the draft of the draft of the draft stream. Uh, so yeah, but it only being banned on the day of the stream, we didn't really think it was too much of a big deal for uh, someone to draft you still, really, is it? I mean, we, we don't know whether or not it's ban-worthy in this format anyway, probably is, um, but, but, yes. So, anyway, Landorus Incarnate, I'm sure you guys are well aware why someone would want this thing on, on their team. There's not too many things that it does. It is essentially an offensive sweeper. Uh, and it really offends a lot of people, actually, so it's quite ironic. And um, yeah, basically, what it does the most, life orb, sheer force, agility, coverage moves, destruction. It rolls through teams. Um, you could, you could try and bat and pass into it, maybe? Which we have a couple of mon to do a bat and pass set with, as a matter of fact. Uh, three, I believe. I believe three of our mon can learn bat and pass. Yeah, so that could, that could be interesting, actually. But yeah, so we could easily bat and pass into it. Uh, if we bat and pass some uh, speed into it, maybe, or some special attack, or both, dare I say it? Holy monkeys, friends, could you imagine? If we manage to bat and pass some attack and some speed into this thing, it's going to destroy. It, there is, unless you have priority ice, uh, and if this thing's at full health, it's going to tear through your team. Jesus fucking Christ, do you know what? If I managed... I'm telling you now, if I manage to get an agility and a calm mind into Landorus Incarnate when it's at full health and my opponent doesn't have Ice Shard, yeah, we're probably going to win. So that's why I've got Landorus Incarnate. It's basically the Exodia of Pokemon. So second on the team, friends, we have Zapdos. This is another one of the Mon that I planned for. I really, really love Zapdos and the reason that I love Zapdos is because I is a Gen 1-er! No, uh, well I am actually a Gen 1-er in a way. I started with Gen 1 when it first came out. I'm an old man. I do love Zapdos. I've always had a bit of an affinity for it. It's just this mighty spiky bird of destruction with this kind of spiky feathery mane around its face. It just looks intimidating. It looks powerful and electric types are badass. They're all, they've always been one of my favorite types as a matter of fact. But beyond all of that, competitively the reason I wanted Zapdos is because it can be a fantastic defensive wall. It can be a fantastic, especially defensive wall. Maybe not necessarily the best defensive type in the world, with it being flying type, but it's got decent bulk. It has access to roost. It has access to heat wave to cover things uh, that may give it problems. Um, it's got Volt Switch, so that nice initiative is always good. But as well as that, we have the option to set up agilities. We have the option to set up Calm Minds, I believe. I'm pretty sure Zapdos lands Calm Mind. Hmm. I'm pretty sure you do, don't you, buddy? Yes. So yes, Zapdos, calm mind. And what I'm thinking, friends, 
is that Zapdos can Calm Mind, or if he doesn't learn Calm Mind, then I'm being a scrub, Agility, and we can bat and pass that into people. We have got plenty of Mon on the team that would really appreciate some stat boosts. And Zapdos has got the bulk, and I think the typing, to be able to set up and get a bat and pass off, honestly. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we'd have to play around our opponent's team, we'd have to make sure that uh, there's no easy switchings to Zapdos, they could just force us out without being able to pass the boost. But I think Zapdos has a lot of potential here. I mean, if we didn't want to go the bat and pass route, we could just set up an agility and try and sweep. There's a lot of things Zapdos can do, and we could take our opponent by surprise with it. Thirdly, we have Torkoal! I was actually quite close to dropping Torkoal because uh, along with, um, let's see, well I'll, I'll give you a bit of a spoiler, we have Registeel as well as Torkoal and Zapdos as some of our main defensive mon, uh, they share between them a severe Edgequake weakness, and you do not want an Edgequake weakness on your defensive core, you just don't, uh, but I do, I have that, and it, it, it's very dangerous and I was very close to dropping Torkoal for that reason. But Torkoal has one of the highest defensive stats of all Pokemon. It can take hits like a champ. Um, outside of the Edgequake weakness uh, and the water weakness, it is a fairly decent defensive type, and it can take those priority bullet punches quite nicely. It can take those priority ice shards quite nicely. Uh, you know, so we could switch into the potential priority moves that may be coming our way. Uh, yeah, and it can set up rocks, it can rapid spin, it's not the most defensive thing in the world, but if we wanted to be nice and tricksy, we could always run Yawn on this thing too. <laughs> so that could always be an option. So that's Talk All. Fourth, Rose Raid. I love Rose Raid. Rose Raid is another mon that is not 100% predictable. You could go the specially defensive route. I believe it has a base 130 special defense and incredible incredible amount of special defense from one like this not the best hp stat in the world um not too bad of a defensive typing uh neutral damage from from earthquake uh it, it is it is weak to, is to psychic it's weak to fire it's weak to flying uh weak to ice yeah 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 this is all true but it, it's it's ability to set up toxic spikes it's decent special defensive stat along with the fact that our opponent probably wouldn't be expecting us to be running a specially defensive set if we were doing so uh, that could catch them by surprise and allow us to set up a few layers of Toxic Spikes, which could always be nice. But what we're probably going to be doing more often than that is running the offensive set. Technician Boosted Hidden Powers, my friends. Technician Boosted Hidden Powers, the rarity. Rarer than a Mew. Technician Boosted Hidden Powers are a glorious thing. Although there are a moderate amount of mon that can run Technician, not a lot of them would really want to be running Hidden Power. But Rose Raid has a pretty damn decent special attack stat. It has. A pretty damn decent move pool if you factor in the hidden powers I think we could really power through teams with technician life orb or maybe some kind of um, bat and pass setup again uh, technician life orb hidden power fire on a on a grass type switch or a steel type switch or some type of switch maybe even a hidden power ice if we're expecting something shift in the flying type shenanigans or hidden power electric for a talent flame you know what I'm saying <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think Rose Raid is going to serve us well, and I think that the power and the technician boosted hidden power, hidden power, hidden power, hidden power. Don't know why I had problems saying that there. The technician boosted hidden power is going to be a real asset. Next up is Noivern. Now I don't really need to say too much about Noivern. Infiltrator, fantastic. What is a substitute? Am I right? Uh, it's got an incredible speed stat. Uh, the Hurricane. Hello. If we can. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that Durant learns Bat and Pass. I, again, again, don't quote me on it, but if it does, we could Bat and Pass a home course into Neuven. And then we've got a really accurate, a really rather accurate Hurricane. Um, but outside of that, it's got access to Boom Burst, a glorious move indeed. Um, it's got that nice fire coverage in the form of Flamethrower. Who doesn't like to drop a Draco? So basically, Neuven, Neuven can run a few uh, items, uh, Life Orb. Choice specs. You could, you could try an expert belt. An expert belt is decent on Noivan if you don't want to lock yourself in or take that residual damage in the form of life orb damage. Um, yeah, so I think that Noivan's move ball plus speed uh, is definitely, definitely going to serve as well. Next up is my boy Registeel. Now, if you guys have been following the PPL and I'm a good buddy Shroom Raver, I'm sure you guys will be more than aware of the merits of Registeel. Registeel is a force to be reckoned with. Um, <laughs> Registeel, under the guide of Shroomy, took out an Entei. Yes. An Entei! Yeah. 
<laughs> it was amazing, honestly. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to go for the exact same sort of strategy, like send him into a fire type and then do the crazy counter shenanigans, although I may well do that. But yeah, Registeel has an incredible uh, defensive capabilities. It, it can be Spadef. It's more likely to be defensive uh, on my side. It can set up rocks. It uh, has access to some really nice moves like Iron Head. Not that we're going to be getting the flinch or anything, am I right? Um, yeah, so I really rate Registeel. It's mainly going to be a defensive mon, but it packs enough of a wallop to be able to wear things down. Um, so if we're stuck in a situation where it's wall versus wall, Registeel, for the most part, will do pretty damn well. Not to mention that it has access to T-Wave and that is always nice. Now we come to probably a, a mildly controversial pick in the form of Granbull, because Granbull was an F rank. And I drafted uh, Granbull because I have oh, an F rank, by the way, in case you guys aren't up to date with all the TBU rules, uh, is a mon that we didn't need to draft. You only need to draft mon from S to E. You can draft S plus if you like, which are better than S, or you can draft F, which is supposedly worse than E if you like, but they're not mandatory. But Granbull, yeah, I really love Granbull. A lot of you guys who have followed me for a long time uh, and who watch my videos will be aware that I love Granbull. Granbull is an absolute monster. Uh, Rattled can be a nice ability if you want to go down that route, if you want to play it risky, but I prefer to go Intimidate with Assault Vest. That is a very common set for me to run. It's not the set I'm only going to run, guys, so if you're watching this TBU opponent, don't start strategizing now. Yeah, so Intimidate plus Assault Vest is always a nice combo. Uh, Fairy is a moderately decent defensive typing. Uh, if you keep it away from Poison and Steel, you're going to be okay for the most part. Um, you don't necessarily have to go Assault Vest, give this thing lefties. Uh, give it full defensive investment and then well maybe just run bulky attack because uh, then you're gonna take those physical hits moderately well anyway not to mention that he can pack quite a wallop his play roughs hurt like a beast he has access to the elemental punches earthquake I believe yeah heal well heal well the well of healing throw your opponents into the well of healing and no uh, yeah, Ice X to heal battle and uh, Thunder Wave as well makes it a quite a versatile mon indeed not that easy to prepare for in my opinion. I quite like the Choice Benders set honestly. It's a nice uh, nice little surprise. Well, it's not a nice surprise for him. <laughs> ah uh, yes, I digress, let's move on to the next mon. Next up we have Vaporeon. I needed an evolution for my team because um, Apart from Frito, I'm probably the biggest Eevee fan in the whole league. I love Eevee, I love the Evolutions, they're amazing. Vaporeon has been one of my favourites since Gen 1, absolutely adore Vaporeon. Fantastic specially defensive mon, great HP, great spadef. You can run physically defensive if you are so inclined, I've done that before. Not to mention it is another baton passer, it can baton pass some nice acid armor boost, baton pass a wish, just baton pass the hell out of there. And if you really want to, you can go offensive. Give this thing some choice specs, give it some HP and some special attack investment, it'll still Still take non-super effective hits really well and be able to take a massive chunk out of your opponent. Definitely do not underestimate this beast. And having a water immunity is always glorious, especially when you have Torkoal, uh, the Manitan, Landorus Incarnate on your team. Next up, and the last of the initial draft, the mon that I'll be able to use from the word go, is Hydreigon. And I know you might be thinking, hey bro, why have you drafted two dragons? Well, I was thinking, I needed a dark type, basically. Um, well, I don't need a dark type, but I wanted a dark type. Having that psychic immunity is nice. Uh, being able to hit, stab dark type moves is always an asset. Not to mention Hydreigon has a fantastic move pool. Uh, Scarfed Hydreigon is always a presence, always a threat. Something you've really got to watch, watch out for because once it's Scarfed, it can outspeed quite a lot of things. Quite a lot of things that will be brought in on it as well. And you could do some serious damage with the Dark Pulse of Draco. Multitude. Many, many other moves. Um, and if you really want to be crazy really want to be crazy you could try and mix it up yeah try a physically offensive hydragon you ever you ever seen one of those i'm sure you have i'm sure you guys have but yeah hydragon good coverage great mom threat dark type and before i go onto the bench i'm gonna talk about our mega and our mega for the tbu season one is mega lot punny now frito and i had a bit of a had a bit of a thing about this no we didn't don't get me wrong, no animosity, no aggression, but Frito very much wanted Megalopunny, and I very much wanted Megalopunny, and we both decided that before we knew the other wanted it. He was a gentleman, and he said that he wouldn't try and snipe it from me. Not that he could, because I had the first Mega Pick. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, he, he, he was, he, but this was before 
the draft order was announced. He said he wouldn't snipe it from me. Um, and to be honest, he had a very good backup Mega in the form of Mega Manetric. He really likes Mega Manetric, and he puts the Vault Town and the Intimidate to really good use. So he ended up with something that really fits his playstyle, and I personally adore Mega Love Honey. That stab, priority fake out, not to mention Drain Punch, High Jump Kick, Ice Punch, oh, the return power, Scrappy, oh, 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 oh. and not to mention Hentai. It's just, it's just so good. And as a boy who had a bit of a thing with the caramel bunny, I mean, come on, come on now. How could I? How could I say no? I'm gonna stop now. Okay, the first of the benchmon is Cloister, and uh, the reason I wanted Cloister is because, well, you can never have enough water, am I right, IGN? No, uh, yeah, I, I just, I really like Cloister. It, again, is a mon that is not too predictable. Scarf Cloister with Skill Link, a thing. Defensive Cloister with Spikes and Rapid Spin, a thing. Fully offensive Shell Smash. Craziness Cloister, a thing. Shell Smash with Focus Sash. S shell Smash uh, with White Herb. So many potential sets and, well, Skill Link is always scary as fuck. I don't know about you guys, but I've been wrecked by Cloister, but I'm not prepared for it on more than one occasion. That is for sure. Next up, Domanitan. Now, do I really need to explain to you guys why I wanted Domanitan? I don't have much of a physical fire presence on the team. In fact, I don't have a physical fire presence on the team outside of Fire Punch from Gramble, and, uh, well, we could potentially run physical fire moves on Torkoal, but, uh, yeah, that's irrelevant. He's a defensive mon. So, yeah, Domanitan. Domanitan hits hard. Again, you don't always know what Domanitan's going to run. He could be Life Orb Sheer Force, most commonly scarfed, occasionally banded, but my god, if that Flare Blitz isn't one of the scariest things in the in competitive battling, I don't know what is. People are forced to think carefully when the prospect of a Demanitan Flare Blitz is there. You know, people have to be far more cautious when Demanitan is around, and quite rightly so. Uh, so Demanitan's sheer power, it's sheer force, and it, it's moderate. Moderate versatility is the reason I wanted it. Not to mention that you could get really sneaky, expect your opponent to switch in a defensive mon to start wish passing and stuff like that, and you could preempt them with a taunt. That's right, this thing gets torn. I love it. Uh, yeah, so, Darmanitan, ladies and gents. The last mon, the last member of the awesome Asset Sizzles for Season 1 was originally, originally going to be Smeagol. I really, really wanted Smeagol. I did. Um... It's the most versatile mon in the game, move-wise. You know, it can learn any move. It could do anything. And I had some really devious and evil ideas um, for him. I, I thought we could do some really great stuff with him. However, I got some advice from some people, because um, there was a two-day grace period after the draft stream where we could make two changes to our team, as long as the team is still legal afterwards, um, according to the TBU rules. Then, yeah, we could make two changes to the team. I had a discussion with a few people. Um, the main person who was against Smeagol was Shadi, and I really respect Shadi's opinion when it comes to competitive battling. Uh, he really knows his shit. And he also pointed out that another amazing competitive battler that I know is Miguel, and Miguel drafted Smeagol in Season 3 of the GBA, and he quickly dropped him. And if Miguel can't make Smeagol work in this sort of format, I don't think I'm going to make Smeagol work in this sort of format. Not to mention that uh, it does basically, it, it's really easy to prepare for in a draft format because people will, people will know, people will know you're likely going to bring it, they're going to bring loads of taunt, they're going to bring priority, they're going to smash your face in, they're going to rip your little painted tail off, and they're going to paint a dick on your forehead, and then they're going to shove the tail in your orifices, orifices, orify, orifices, orify, orify. Orifice? What is the plural of orifices? Orifice. Orifice. Hmm. But yeah, that, that's my basic point. So we uh, we went uh, with another mon as our last mon. We decided to drop Smeagol. Sorry, Smeagol. Love you, buddy. We went for the only metal bug we could go for since Jedi stole Sizzle from us. Durant. That's right, guys. We have Durant. Now, I really, really like Durant. Durant has a moderately good speed stat, uh, all things considered. It, it's not the bulkiest thing in the world, and it's four times weakness to fire is a problem. Uh, not to mention that, strangely, it, its best ability is Hustle. Hustle is a bad ability. That ain't a good thing. But it does have access to Home Claws. Hustle, if you don't know, drops your accuracy but increases your power. Now, nobody wants their accuracy lowered. Nobody ever. 
But the increase in power, plus its access to home claws to boost its accuracy, means that if you get a home claws off, or dare I say it, two home claws off, you have hustle boosted attacks, plus two hustle boosted attacks that are probably not gonna miss. That is some immense power. Not to mention that Stiglin Bug is a really good offensive type and it can deal with a lot of stuff. Um, I think Duran, if we put it to good use, could do some immense damage. If we manage to baton pass into this thing, if we baton pass some agility into this thing, then it gets a home claws off. Hello, hello, that's destruction. That's gonna do some serious damage. So yeah, guys, that is your all summer set sizzles for season one. Let me know what you think in the comment section of the team. Let me know which mon you think is most likely to be MVP of the season. I know that's a very hard thing to pick now, but which one do you think will do the most work based on the team? Uh, let me know if there's any particular sets you'd like to see me run. Let me know anything, anything about the team at all. I am open to suggestions. If you guys have any nicknames you would really like to see me use, hit me up. I will most likely use one of them. Uh, yeah, so thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, leave a thumbs up. If you have not enjoyed, leave a thumbs down. But please leave a comment and let me know why you left one of those ratings. Also, please, friends, check out the TBU Twitter and the TBU YouTube. You guys will find lots of great content on the TBU channel once things get rolling. It's a bit quiet at the minute because we're still making preparations for the league to start. We are in the process of finding a second analyst for uh, some of our series. But we do have seven series planned for the TBU channel. Uh, so yeah, get hyped for that. All the battles will be on the individual coaches channel, so they will also be linked in the description. Please check out each individual coach. They all have great content, except for one of them who doesn't upload. God damn it! But hopefully he, well, he, he's uploaded a couple of things, but hopefully he'll upload soon. Hopefully he'll be more of an uploader. I'd like to see him upload more. Yes. So check out the coaches, check out the TBU channels and Twitter and things and my bobs and jigs and have a sizz awesome day. Wish us luck for season one and enjoy. Goodbye.